I can see you guys, but I can't. There we Hello. go. Hello. Hello, my dear. Hello. Is it working? <laughs> oh, dear. Is it working? <laughs> it is working. Amazing. This is, I think this is my first, my first uh, computer telephone call. I know. I was a little bit worried about it, to be honest. I th <laughs> that's, that's very pleasant. I thought you'd have had like a team of IT squirrels around there. <laughs> you, just, you just missed one like that. <laughs> How are you doing, champ? You all right? Good, mate. How's it going? All right. Well, well, all right. Yeah, I guess it's all right. I'm trying to wrap my head around the last year, to be honest, but it is what it is. Yeah, you know. The how, cookie, how the cookie you crumbles. How have you been? I've been, I've been extraordinarily well, apart from the 30,000 foot tall spectre of death <laughs> hanging over everything. Apart from I that, know. really... But apart from that, great. Yeah. It's a bit, there's that. a bit of latency on this call. I was speaking to Rasheen Murphy last night. So because it's so far away, if I talk over you or you talk over me, it's just because there's latency, right? It's a bit of lateness on these calls. They're not great. So we, we, can, we can live with that. We'll fumble through it. So I, I saw California, liberal California, is now, which I find bizarre, is, is like a hot spot for COVID, right? Which is madness. So, um, if you pay attention to that kind of thing, yeah. Well, I mean, which I, 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 I kind of do. Every now and then, I have to have a media blackout. Otherwise, I get scared by the climate of fear. Yeah, I've been banned from watching CNN by the missus, to be honest. <laughs> it's, it's yeah, just... I mean, it, you know, I'm sure the truth is out there somewhere. Yeah, you know? and and you know, we can only go on what we're given. So um, I believe that, yeah, there, there's definitely a major issue with COVID out there right now. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm going to cheers you and wish you a Merry Christmas. I bought a, a special... Merry Christmas. Here's to... It looks like you're drinking, you're drinking Blue Nun as well. I'm on Saki, mate, not Blue Nun. Uh, we ran out of Blue Nun and petrol. <laughs> and I've, I've gone through three bottles of urine in the last week. So I thought, right, <laughs> buy some Saki. Um, so thanks for doing this, Harv. I know you're not. I, you're a bit media shy, and it's, it was actually difficult for me because I, I, I'm a bit camera shy also. So, thank you, brother. You're um, welcome. It means a lot. Um, so, Merry Christmas, as I just said. Merry so, Christmas. I mean, how have you? I mean, how is LA? Can you still get in the water? I mean, I know that's important. You can you still surf and yes, I mean, yes. Yeah, you know, there's, there's, like, I'm, I'm probably in the best position it's possible to be. You know, I'm, I'm in, I live in Venice Beach, is in southern, sunny southern California right now. Which, I mean, the last week's been stunningly beautiful, not too hot, not too cold. You know, it's, like, I live within a couple of blocks of the beach, so I like to go down there. And since. Since the very first month or so of the so-called lockdowns, the beaches have been open, and there's actually been some nice developments. Like yeah. you don't you don't get busted for walking your dog on the beach anymore, which which seems seems a nice thing because I like to walk my dog on the beach. That's crazy, right? Um, you know, I mean, like I say, if it wasn't for it being the end, you know, the end time. Mm. It, it would be perfectly all right. I mean, you know, I've, I've, I've been very lucky. I've been able to live on the money that I've earned in the past few years over the last year. But I haven't earned any money in the last year. And that could only go on for a certain amount of time. I'm not, you know, if, 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 Same. Things, yeah. you know, if things don't eke out. So, so far, so good. But but who who knows you know who who knows hopefully I'll be you know I, I I hope that the the vaccines take effect and this time next year will there might be a semblance of some sort of nightlife again which would be yeah wonderful. I think I think maybe late summer we may be in luck I think next early summer maybe wiped out but I mean 
what can you do, man? Yeah, I'm in no rush. Better safe than sorry. You know, I'm I'm happy to let it all pan out. As long you know, as long as my rent's paid, then jobs are good, and there's a lot of people in a lot. You've of got work. pendants for caviar, though, son. So you might have to sort of cut back on that for for, for the next year. <laughs> you know, if, if you're gonna go down, you know, sooner or later, California is gonna snap off and slide into the Pacific Ocean. So, you know, plague or no plague, you know, it's uh, we might you know we might as well play the harp while Rome burns in, in, in some respects anyway. Yeah, Titanic situation. Um, exactly. I mean, what's happening in the UK is crazy now. They've basically, basically, they've been cut off from the rest of the world or EU and they've got this strain that's 70% strong, or oh, 70% more contagious, sorry, than, than anywhere else. So um, they, they, got their, they got their Brexit pretty sharpish. Um, which is a sh- which is ob- I mean it's hilarious, but it's it's a shame for people experiencing it, you know, um, as it were. I mean, it's so I I really can't pass judgment because I don't know. I'm not well enough educated to understand the consequences of the majority of monetary policies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's I like I you know I I reserve the right to change my mind having been better educated. Um, so it's very, it's very difficult. I'm not, I'm, I'm on the face of it, you know, you would say Brexit is looking like a bad thing for, for absolutely everyone concerned, you know, for even those who considered it a good thing, it might, it's, it's not looking such like such a bright proposition. So I suppose it, you know, over time, all these things will speak for them, you know, will uh, speak for themselves as it were, or, but all will be revealed as it were, but it's, it's all, you know, if it wasn't so serious, it'd be really funny. You know? <laughs> it's, you know. it, well, it is it's slapstick, almost. It's fucking, <laughs> you know, and, and that, you know, to my mind, the great eccentricities and the uh, the sort of comedy of England is what made England great. So in, in the face of, you know, potential disaster, there'll be some really great comedy shows, I'm sure. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> or maybe some music that may come out of it. I don't know. I mean, I mean, yeah. I guess one, one positive of the lockdown and the shutdown of everything, club culture and stuff. So you, you, you've been back in the studio, right, recording? Is that um, yes that's and no. Not, not so, I'm a great underachiever. I haven't done a whole lot of work, you know. Um, I mean, I've relaunched, or well, Launched a new label, as it were, HGS. Harvey's General Store. Harvey's General Store, HGS Entertainment, which is a sort of an umbrella moniker for all things artistic, whether it's music, movies, sculpture, fashion, you know, whatever, whatever it may oh, be. Oh, nice, man. So like a mi- like mix of home goods. And so that's you know that's that's been launched, and then and then that you know there's there's. You know, been re-releases of stuff, of some some new stuff, and and potential. You know, sky's the limit. Potential for pivoting, as they call it, in any direction. Oh, I love a pivot. I love a pivot, man. You know, whatever whatever that may may entail. But you know, um, trying to get the rent paid, being unable to play records for a living, basically. Yeah, but it's interesting that you, now you've got headspace and time to do that because I think it's. It's yeah, you know, it's, it's a great business opportunity and super creative if you can push mo- film through there and anything under that umbrella, right? It's great. It's great. Yeah, I mean, I I, I live in the realm of art, and you know, that's I'm an, I'm an entertainer. That's my 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 thing, as it were. So I don't have, you know, it's not like DJing's. My, I'm on one trick pony in that in that respect. You know, I can turn a hand to anything in the realm of arts, whether it yeah, whether it's acting or soundtrack or sculpting or well, whatever whatever it may be. And it, you know, and you you can't push the um, the you know if people knew the formula to popularity, they would do it. And I suppose some people do with you know with sort of fast food chains and pop music, but. I, I, if I knew how to sell out, I would have done a long time ago. Believe you me. Oh, I, I know that. I just, can't, I can't. I, I need I can't. to be lazy. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too lazy to sell out. It's true. Basically, yeah. 
<laughs> I know you well enough, mate. Um, <laughs> so what's the, uh, the, the Waco Maria collaboration? I mean, I've, you kind of gave me some of the pieces, which are beautiful. Is, is that ongoing or is that one off? Um, yeah, we're, ba- we're in negotiation now, you know, as, as everyone knows, you know, the, the world has drawn to a halt. Um, we did one year of a sort of, let's see if we can work together. The second season, we did a whole bunch of amazing stuff, wine shirts, leather jackets, tracksuits, t-shirts, baseball caps. A whole, almost a whole... The leathers were amazing, man. The leather jacket. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like beautiful high-end pieces, um, which seems to have done very well. You know, they're appearing on, you know, the likes of Virgil Abloh and all, you know, all all over the world type stuff, which, you know, and, uh, you know, they do great quality stuff. They're well-respected, blah, blah, blah. So... Were you hands, hands on with like the fabric sourcing and the leather and everything, or not? Um, well, so okay, let's just say the le- the leather, for instance, in the jackets. So you've got yeah, cow, yeah. Just the big three, if you like, like cow hide, yeah. sheep hide, and horse hide. You know, so cows you go to standard. Sheep can be can, or goat can be very soft but not as durable. And horse hide takes a, a long time to wear in, but I, you know, there's only one horse hide that has that sort of thick gloss, like the sort of, you know, so I, I, I wanted my jacket to, to be, to last for a hundred years, you know, it's, you know, it, it should be something that can, can, can last at least that long if it's reasonably well looked after. So the way to go with that is with the front quarter horse hide. Now I didn't go and point at the horse and go, ah, shoot it. That poor bastard. No, but I did specify the type of leather that I required, and also, you know, specific things like you know, maybe the the weight of the t-shirt, or whether it's rayon or nylon, or the silk mix of the shirt, or whatever. Like a certain amount of detail, but not not to the source. And the, the print design was that you, or did you like collaboration? Um, again, the designs were really sort of three or four tiered. Some of it came from my son, Harley. Yeah. I mean, yeah. everything was ultimately bounced off me. You know, yeah. there was also stuff from uh, Maurice San, who, who who runs and owns Waco Maria, and his his daughter put in some some ideas to say that you know the light the lining of the leather jacket is taken from some um, ancient Japanese erotica, which was put together in collage oh, by, by Maury's daughter. Wow. So, so, you know, every, you know, like with so many of, you know, if you work with a, with a, a, a Japanese brand that has, pays attention to detail, you can work on that level with things like, you know, the, the type of stitching within the lining or whatever, or the colors of the studs or whatever it may be for, for, for each, each project, but to answer your question, um, I would say yes. We're we're working on it right now. You know, we're in negotiation. Like everything has come to a fucking halt because of COVID and trade They're suffering as well from a retail perspective. I guess trade weirdness and all of that. You know, in some respects, a lot of people are buying stuff online. Yeah. Um, but in other respects, actually getting some certain amounts of stuff done. Can be can be quite difficult depending yeah, on the product. Know, I mean, manufacturing is by lines, right? Yeah, you know. So, like the, the the leather piece, which I adore. So that's like a jacket for life, like a Lewis leather almost, right? That's something. You've yeah, got. in fact, Lewis Lewis was quite an inspiration behind the whole thing. I yeah. took for that particular dra- jacket, which would be generally described as a rider's jacket or a double rider's jacket. That particular like sort of double breasted cut. And just been around, you know, just around a hundred years. It's a classic. Uh, came from uh, aviation cut, and so the mili- I love the, mili- the military style. It's from a military style, is it? I think probably the original ones were from the um, the Royal. Fl- I think it was the Fl- Royal Flying Corps, the Royal Flying uh, something. That I, sh- I should know. Wow. You know the first, the first adaptation of, of American, of the Air Corps. American, American Air Corps, British Air Corps. Yeah, probably, probably the British first, um, and that's why if you look at like Lewis leathers, often their label describes their stuff as 
avia kit, like aviation, like kit for yeah, aviation. Yeah, yeah. It's like a flight, Lewis, right? Lewis Leather's avia kit. So, to cut a long story short, amongst my collection of leather jackets, I took the features from the ones I like best. So, yeah. Um, so, so the, the the front half of this particular jacket is quite similar. The way the pockets are laid out to uh, a Langlitz um, Cascade, and then the back of the jacket is similar to uh, a Lewis Bronx. So it uses the big one panel and the uh, the sleeve. Basically, the sleeves open up with a box at the back, so you can move your hands forwards to the controls of your airplane or your motorcycle yeah, without, yeah. without the sleeves riding up and you know, a, bun a bunch of stuff went into it, and then it has it has loops for a Sam Brown belt, but then it also has lace ties at the side, which can give you basically an inch either way. But if you're actually riding in it, that can make sure it's really nice and snug around your waist, so yeah, your right. kidneys don't get cold on those old country roads in November. You don't want your kidneys cold, mate. You don't want oh, your kidneys cold. Oh, mate. <laughs> you're pissing blood before you get home. <laughs> Which you, we, nobody wants, do they, really? Oh, no, you don't want that, mate. No, no. They don't so like it. you've been stateside. That if my numbers are right, um, this isn't research, by the way. These, this is Mo's Haddle Brain numbers for almost 20 years, right? Or more. 20 years. Yes, yeah, pretty much 20 years. 19 years, right? 19, 20 years. Yeah. Well, you got some caviar to eat. <laughs> oh, I've got some blue nun to finish off. <laughs> um, so, you, you know my obsession... I've got a big obsession about that whole Laurel Canyon scene. I've bent your ear about it many, many times from the late 60s, early 70s. Yes, so that's a, a big obsession in the folklore and all, all the, the music, obviously, and the characters. Have you seen the, the, the recent Cameron Crowe, David Crosby doc documentary, which is really, really based oh. on the history of that? So he, oh, uh, Crosby reckons he was first boots on the ground in Laurel Canyon. I don't know how true that was. I don't know if it's bravado or bullshit. Um, it's a really interesting documentary. Um, and they sort of tip into a little bit about um, Manson, right? So I didn't know this story and it, I didn't get it from the documentary. It's just a couple of books I've been reading, some research also that I've, I've done before this interview. So I didn't know that fucking Crosby recorded um, the first recorded and produced the first Charlie Manson demos. Is that true? Um, I can't say one way or the other, but I wouldn't be surprised. I think Charlie was around, and um, you know Crosby was obviously around. The, as far as being first boots on the ground in in Laurel Canyon, you know Laurel Canyon's been there for a long time. And there's been people there for a long time. Yeah, I mean, it's part of the scene, I guess. His words were. To be yeah, well, I mean, you know, it's sort of the obvious one step back from 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 Sunset Boulevard, and you know, you know, I talked to Kim. Well, it's Kim. I think Kim Fowley's passed away, but anyway, he he always made fun of the whole thing. But um, yeah, I don't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be surprised. You know, I I think Charlie was was around making recordings. You know, down with as many people as as he could be. I think. After the murders, I think a lot of people didn't want to be associated with Funny him. That, huh? Funny that. <laughs> Funny that. That happens, that, doesn't it? <laughs> no, so I as many people as he may have. I mean, it, it just, yeah. I find it super odd that like somebody, that they must have known at the time that he was, something wasn't quite right with him. And he was rubbing shoulders with, I mean, apparently Neil Young, who's one of my heroes, urged Mo Austin, who was running reprise records at the time to sign him. And Mo Austin signed fucking Frank Sinatra to the Sex Pistols. Like he's a, a genius, you know, and everything in between. So he was the CEO of reprise records that Frank Sinatra owned, which I didn't even know, which is bizarre. Um, and basically he got a knock, uh, uh, Manson got a knockback from Austin. And that's when, that was his trigger basically, his pivot, if you want, into, into complete darkness. So I just don't know if that's folklore and you having you having boots on the ground there. I mean, what, what's your, what's your, I know you're obsessed with it as well a little bit. I know you probably rubber necked around Laurel Canyon a few times and look at it's, it's, 
a fantastic story. It's a it fantastic is. story. It's fascinating. Fascinating. And there's 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 so many wonderful grey areas, and faced with the the size and shape of modern day ultra violence. Yeah. You know, it's quite it's quite quaint. Dare I say it? How could a mass murder be quaint? But it almost is, you know. Um, and the whole thing around it, I mean, you know, Charlie may well have been convicted, but um, he wasn't, you know, it, it's... He orchestrated it's, it, right? What's your, that? Well, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if he did. If, if you look into, if you now look into like uh, Bugliosi and his, um, the content of his character, yeah. Is not, is not exactly glowing, you know. No, no, exactly. So, um, and, you know, Helter Skelter, as far as I'm concerned, is um, a really great book about getting a conviction. Yeah. Um, I don't really know how much truth it concerns. It contains quite a bit, but... Um, it's it's the story how Bugliosi you know, gained the, the, the conviction at the time with his own version of Psycho Babble and the rest of it, you know. So uh, Charlie got got caught up in that. I think he could have very easily taken a couple of steps and a duck here and there and and and, walk, and walked away, you know. So but did um, you think that? Change in him was the knockback from Mo Austin from the from the music industry because no. I mean the Sharon the Sharon Tate murder and everything obviously he was a, a huge star at the time was she not it seemed like yes. he had, a, he, had yeah. a real, he had a real fucking anger towards the entertainment industry yeah uh, I think it's really easy to throw all these theories at it and I think it could have the truth could be a lot more chaotic. So and it wasn't Crosby, it was one of your heroes, Dennis Wilson, who produced the right. demo. Oh, okay. Well that that's even more more probable. Yeah. So, uh, you have some Manson demos. I me- remember going back twenty years ago you had some demos that you played me. You still want them? I've got, I've got God knows what I've got. Bits and pieces, nothing. Nothing nothing, 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 really. nothing nothing was pressed, right? Nothing, yeah, but nothing serious. I wouldn't say. I mean, these days I hardly remember. I haven't even touched that this, any of the storage I have since I since I moved from England. So there's stuff from from 20 and 25 years that, that was even unpacked packed from different moves that that I haven't had my hands on. So um, I wouldn't say I have anything serious that and it, well, I haven't got anything that hasn't been heard put it that way right there might be one or two things that weren't released but nothing that's that that that's secret if you like and most of the the special stuff if you like that might be related to that scene is all from California anyway this is right. where it happened this is where like up until quite recently, a lot of people involved in the whole deal was still alive, and you can go and you know buy them lunch and get a story, you know. Yeah, but, yeah, but these real thrills or cassette? I mean, is it just somebody, 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 somebody passed on? Or I think cassette stuff and VHS stuff, which is probably taken from from oh. Super Eight or Sixteen Mil. Yeah, yeah, or yeah, yeah. Like I say, nothing, nothing really serious in that in that world. So one last question, well, two last questions. I'll be quick. I know, on, then, you've got, I know, you've got, I know, I know you want to drill through your blue nun. What's do, our post pandemic? What, how do you see club culture changing? Do you, do you think there will be a change, a shift? I do think you, it will take a long time to get back to some sort of semblance of how it was before. Yeah. With basically no one really caring about um, those kind of things. But I remember, a, you know, a similar thing happening with HIV, decimating the club community, you know. Yeah. Lots of people dying, people don't, not knowing where it came from, like the whole the whole scene was was decimated through paranoia, paranoia and actually you know, death right? itself. Um, it will probably never be exactly the same. There may, you may have to show some, like show your phone that you're vaccinated or, 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 Tested negative or something, um, but I, I think, think that'd be the way, right? For entry, 
pretty sure. Yeah. That and then I think in, you know, over, you know, within a year, hopefully within a year, and definitely within five years, we'll have something of a semblance of a, of a, a, a new, a renaissance, the, the new, you know, the post, post pandemic nightclub world. Yeah. And hopefully something new and really exciting will happen that we don't even like or understand. Because <laughs> we're too yeah, old. <laughs> I, I mean, there's been two, well, I, I guess two explosions, right? Late, the late 60s in Acid House, right? Or the mid to late 60s in Acid House. Do, do you see, is everything became become so grey? Or do you do you ever see another, another youth culture slash music explosion? Um, digital age. Yeah. I think it, it's possible. You know, there's just when you think it's it's all over, it's just begun. Whatever the next thing is, the next big thing is probably at its height right now. We just, what do we know about it? We're old farts. There's probably some, you know, some nice little scene with its own little speciality drug where you have to be on some sort of dark web to be included in it and you know and you get to have lots of sex and you know and, and old people don't like the music i'm sure it's great oh, well give me the nod if you find out yeah yeah well I'm, I'm, we're on it i'm you know i'm, gro I'm grooming the i'm grooming the scouts i just can't imagine yeah. you on the dark web man no, you know. <laughs> all, all right hand grenades on the way for christmas all right buddy lots of love right and merry merry christmas much uh, love love to samantha and, and uh the funny enough of spending christmas with tippy we spent christmas last year as well with you remember yeah that was that was brilliant uh, that was one of the best christmases ever yeah we had silly hats and everything on um so he's, he's a new restaurant so I, i'll send your love he was asking yeah. yesterday um take care yeah, brother shall do say you know, love to your family and everything say hi to tippy and dolly and any other of the usual like um, expats on the run that get out to that part of the way? Yeah, you know, <laughs> you know how it is. Yeah, well, the, most of them have bounced because they got got the wobbles. So I'm just sort of left here like apocalypse now, basically, in my underpants. <laughs> <laughs> like deer hunter, we're gonna have to go back for you. <laughs> All right, champ. Love you loads. Take care, Harv. Love you, mate. Take care. Okay. Bye, mate. Bye-bye. Ciao. Yeah.